And I think one of the problems is people are actually quite lazy students. You know, they just want to be told and then they just want to believe so they don't have to do the real work of constructive thinking or critical thinking. And um, I think it's good that, you know, there's people like you teaching what you're teaching because I've heard you talk about lots of these different things and you talked about a lot of things with Mark Wooding, but um, I like the way you bring up the history of some of these things or you talk about, you know, alternate views and some of these different concepts like we're talking about here. I think it's important for, for people to, you know, put effort into learning so it's not just, you know, pseudo-knowledge. Uh, and, yeah. And because that just becomes a belief system. And as soon as you have a belief system, you actually think you know something and you stop asking questions and you stop growing and you run around imposing your belief system on people. And, you know, that's a great way to not only alienate people, but end up hung up on somebody's cross or something like that. Yeah. And it just creates, you know, that, that merry-go-round. It, cre- it, it literally keeps us in samsara yeah and that doesn't mean that there's no discernment involved either because as you were saying um and i'm very aware of as well how shamanism it was like this two spirit it was it was known for being an outsider for being what literally literally the, de- the definition of weird yes so there's that and i would call that organic and then I have this model, I guess, for reality, or at least what's overlaid over this as well. And that's organic and synthetic, mm-hmm. organic and synthetic. And what we're seeing is a mix of organic and synthetic. None of that is meant to make us not open our heart. None of that is meant to not dull our discernment, right? Right. So it's this navigational period for us going through spiritual sovereignty where we're navigating what are the synthetic or I would call it socially engineered Mm -hmm. manifestations we're seeing and what are the organic and then what is the synthetic things going on or socially engineered things going on that still have some organic qualities to it. And then likewise, what are the more organic themes going on that still have threads that are not quite completely what I would call f- fully organic? Mm-hmm. And so it's like almost looking at it not just from organic and synthetic, but then how those two have compatibility. Mm-hmm. And within that, none of that's meant, like I said, to... to I, I see people being able to point out a lot of social engineering, for instance. But they're coming from, and you've probably encountered this a lot, you can feel their frequency. They're not coming from a better place. No. They're claiming to be conscious because they understand some sort of social engineering. And that's great that they can see through one layer. But it's almost like to see through that, it costs them their heart. And if something closes your heart, then they, whoever we want to call them, they, they win. So it's like black alchemy at that point. It's a false alchemy. And so I see that a lot with, especially every four years, um, anything going on that's like a movement, right? There was like Black Lives Matter. And I saw, I mean, the social engineering was, it was explicit. Mm -hmm. It it was like, duh. And yet I'm still not over three-fourths. Over what? There was that thing in the Constitution saying that African-Americans are three-fourths of... Mm -hmm. A white person. You mean in, because of we emerged from it was African some race? sort of like it was it was saying that a, a slave or or an African American. I don't know exactly the the what how the legislation was written, but back in the day, it was the three fourths. That's what it was known as. And so I look at something socially engineered, and I also can see the organic wound that the collective needs to tap into and heal in order for the social engineering aspect of something to kind of no longer be a blind spot in the collective that can continuously be doused in gasoline and inflamed every time to create further division. So I I see that spiritual sovereignty deals with being able to see social engineering or the synthetic parts of what's going on, the manipulations of what's going on, 
while also seeing any organic qualities and not just throwing each into into just one label. And because of that, I see also how masculine and feminine energies have become, on one thing, there's an organic integration that's coming into play. And then there's an organic, almost like alchemical divine androgyny playing out. Well, what's also playing out is its shadow or what I would consider its social engineering aspect. Mm -hmm. 